Hi, my name is Mike. Welcome to my channel on the re-examination of the Bible. I would like to share with you my vision and my purpose. I hope to teach and inspire people concerning the scriptures. Part of the starting point for our study is to realize that scriptures have not been fully understood yet. Many riddles of scripture have not been resolved. This lack of resolution has simply resulted from the time that elapsed between the events of the New Testament writings to the time when people sought to understand and write about the scriptures. This is not secret information that had been kept from us for thousands of years. It's just a lack of understanding. The first video will emphasize the epistle to the Romans. This is more of an advanced study rather than a lesson introduced in the letter, but I think it will be followed rather easily by most people who look at chapter one of the Romans letter. I have been developing ideas on Romans and some of the other areas of the New Testament for just over 10 years, focusing on that. I have wanted to attain a scholarly level of writing to share my proposals. However, this task has proved itself difficult for an engineering graduate. For now, I can share my ideas with you all, whoever may become interested. I'm excited about my new discoveries. I think my findings will open up our understanding of Romans, explaining many passages that are unresolved in scholarship so far. There are many people in the last 2,000 years who have, may have fully understood Romans in the same way, but never had the details nor a full explanation been made available in general knowledge. The theme of my channel is the re-examination of the Bible. Some people may be attracted to the same sense of discovery as I am. The attraction is to the recognition of some aspects of scripture that have been overlooked. In saying this, I do not generally suggest drastic changes of doctrine. Often my ideas are about clarification of terms, such as the meaning of kingdom of God, or about the context behind some of the letters. Hopefully people will find this channel non-threatening. I'm not here to re-indoctrinate people, nor to scare people. Instead, the goal is to promote hope. The ideas I present should more often fit within standard Christian understanding. By this, I mean that my ideas pretty well fit with doctrines and confessions which have been identified as the standard understanding of Christianity since the time that the creeds and confessions were created. Maybe some people are uncomfortable with confessions and creeds, yet even those with such discomforts may actually appreciate what I will be sharing. My analyses should push the boundaries of knowledge without undoing too much of our common knowledge. I have no desire to go through each and every doctrine of Christianity to reevaluate whether doctrines are true. We should not start off with the assumption that anything or everything in in scripture is questionable. At least this is not my take on things. I am not questioning what Christ has done, nor am I questioning my faith. There is no existential challenge here. I generally focus on the context of writings rather than on doctrine. One benefit of my analyses relates to my late attention to the commentaries. The avoidance of commentaries in my early studies does not represent a general recommendation for students of scripture. However, I was able to arrive at a fresh understanding of some scriptures by first analyzing the passages before reading the commentaries. The overall process is, basically, I had 25 years as a Christian before starting to analyze Romans and Galatians. At this point, after the 25 years, I began writing outlines of the letters. My first was on Romans and many years later on Galatians. The process for making outlines is difficult and interesting, but I will describe it later as the opportunity avails itself. So I had become familiar with letters, the letters over this time. I had memorized passages in Romans early on in my Christian experience. This familiarity seemed to play a critical role in understanding the passage since I could keep the broad letter in mind as I wrote out outlines. Now, concerning my encounters with Romans, as an early Christian, I had trouble with the resources for Romans 
uh, my Bible had an outline, my first Bible had an outline for Romans, which did not help at all to follow the letter. None of it, I could not coordinate what was in the letter with what was being said in the outline. Later on, none of the scholarly works would satisfy my expectations of a clearer outline of Romans. Though it's still true that outlines may reasonably identify a sequence of theological ideas within the letter, though I haven't examined this possibility, my focus is on the outline that describes Paul's approach to fix problems in Rome. It is even possible that my new outline wouldn't have helped me in my early years earlier. That's just one of the aspects of Romans that's always made it difficult. But I think it will help what I present. And on our general encounters with Romans, I'll speak theoretically here. If you agree with my assessment, just nod your head. Most people have had difficulty understanding Romans. We may often find passages in Romans which inspire us and rejuvenate us. Yet a funny thing happens in Paul's letters, or maybe I'm the only one who has encountered this issue. Paul can write in such a flowing fashion, at least as we see it in the English, that we can feel like we have learned and heard so much wisdom. However, closer examination of the letter may actually leave us wondering how Paul got from one paragraph or topic to another. I think we often say, yes, his writing is great. However, if an exact determination of the topic that his writing is desired, we could be lacking for an explanation. For example, Romans 1 sounds powerful. What then shall we say that Abraham, our forefather, according to the flesh, is found? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. This passage has proven to be difficult to understand. Paul asks, what then? The Romans 4 chapter has begun by pointing out the preceding context, chapter 3. From there, is Paul talking about the problem of doing works? Or is he talking about the problem of boasting? Is this about people boasting in their own justification? These are questions that are asked by the scholars. Uh, and it's not resolved among the scholars, which is why we have the video today. I had to examine this years ago. Upon taking the assignment, the passage appeared to be simple. This is the trap we encounter. Again, Paul sounds upfront and logical. Yet the actual approach and message has been elusive. I will not try to explain the passage right now. There is much analysis required to discover how the audience could readily understand Paul. This last point represents a failing common even in the scholarly writings. We are not re only required to figure out what Paul is saying. We must also figure out how the letter could be understood by a single reading or within a single reading of the letter to an audience of 30 people. To understand the letter, we must also understand the circumstances of the audience. Was the audience glad to hear from Paul or were the people suspicious of Paul? Were there problems in Rome that the audience wished to be resolved or were the people reluctant to change their behavior or doctrines? How much of the gospel did the audience comprehend before Paul wrote? I want to start excuse me, I want to start off with a surprise overview of Romans 1 18 to 32. This analysis represents background material for my thesis. My analysis did not appear within the thesis, but it's an important contribution to the study of Romans. Romans 1 18 to 21 reads as for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and an unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world and the things that have been made, so they are without excuse. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God and give thanks to him. A common understanding of the passage sees Paul describing the sinful status of Gentiles who have rejected the knowledge of God and have progressed deeper and deeper into sin. 
Their knowledge had been obtained or thought to be obtained through creation itself, as might be seen in verse 20, where God's attributes are perceived in the things made. The application of the text to Gentiles has persisted throughout the 1700 years of study of Romans. When you hear about the natural revelation, this passage has been one of the main justifications for the gathering of knowledge about God through creation. This passage only recently has been recognized as a passage best describing Jews. Steve Gregg, a teacher in his The Narrow Path ministry, pointed out that verse 18 best describes the Jews. Only Jews had accurate knowledge of God, which could be suppressed. By contrast, any knowledge that the Gentiles had could only have been <clears throat> secondhand or worse. I was not aware of Greg's teaching until after my thesis was completed. So, on my own study, I had evaluated each section in Romans 1, 18-32 to see whether the sections best described Jews or Gentiles. I, like Greg, had found that verse 18 best described Jews. Verse 19 likewise pointed to Jews who had been shown God's nature, even in a direct fashion by God. We see that in an Exodus that God was right amongst them. Although some passages could describe Gentiles, the predominant portion of Romans 1, 18 to 32 best described Jews. Note that a little caution has to be maintained here. It was easy to shift our understanding to view this about Jews, but in reality the passage could describe any people following scripture in the first century. So the passage could describe Jewish and Gentile Christians or non-Christian Jews as well. This discovery to Greg fits within a somewhat traditional understanding of Romans, where he only makes a slight adjustment assigning the passage to Jews instead of Gentiles. My analysis requires a drastic change in our perception of the letter. I will get to this in future videos and writings. But we have an example of new perceptions of Paul's writings which are possible. Again, I'm not looking to find something new or different. My goal on Romans was to understand what Paul was talking about in, Ro in chapter 6. It just happened that many other aspects of Romans took on new life as an effect in my study. This goes against my original desire that all Christians be able to understand scripture in personal studies without the aid of commentaries. But it seems now that context must first be explained before the letter can be understood. And maybe we need commentaries to point largely to the things to, ways not to interpret Romans at some point in time. Overall, I hope that all of Christianity can benefit from my findings also, people hearing this video may discover the meaning of difficult passages through independent studies or studies supplemented by commentaries. Uh, welcome to my channel then and leave comments and questions below. Please like and subscribe to this channel.